All right, so we're, today we're doing 2G and it's we're going to talk about percentages of data lying within um, multiples of the standard deviation and the mean. So what we're going to say, so what I was mentioning before, so the mean, remember that's our symbol for the mean, is the center or the middle value um, in, and we're going to say in, symmetric data. So we only use um, the mean, really, it's only worth talking about when we have symmetric data. So when we have symmetric data, it looks like that bell shape. So we see that the mean would be whatever that scale is down the bottom, the mean will be the middle number, like that's where it is. So what we're going to talk about is we are going to go and say like, oh, if we were like here, so what we talk about is we might say we um, the standard deviation. So the standard deviation, so we'll write that standard deviation. So the standard deviation is, it's like a measure of spread. So if you want to write that, it's a measure of spread. So we want to see how the data is spread around. Okay, so we only use standard deviation when it's symmetric as well. So these two go together. So the mean and standard deviation are always, we work with them, use them together. And what happens is, so the standard deviation is a number. And we have some, we have this uh, 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So what they have found is when you have symmetric data, so you can see if we look down here, we've got our symmetric data. So say we had, um, here's the means. So I'm going to make up some numbers along the bottom here just so you can sort of understand. So say I said the mean was, I'm talking about, let's say, you know, we'll talk about, I'm going to say talk about weights. So I'm going to say, say the mean was 70 kilos. Okay, so here on that number line would be 70. And I'm making this up, but just say we found that the standard deviation was, I'm going to say, 2 kilos. Okay, so we did it in the calculator. We put all the stats in and we found it out. So what we're saying is if you go up, if you add one standard deviation, so in this case, on that number line, that would be 72. Say if I add two standard deviations, that would be 74. And if I add another one, another standard deviation, that would be 76, okay? Now I could minus a standard deviation. So if I took that number away and I'd get 68, if I minus two, I'd get um, 66. And then if I minus three, I would get 64. So what we're saying, this rule, is saying if it'll talk about being plus or minus a certain amount of standard deviations. Now, so let's look at the first one. So the first one they're saying, if you go plus one or pl plus one standard deviation and minus one standard deviation, they're saying you have 68. So in our example, if I said that was 70 and I said if I added one standard deviation, I was at 72. And if I minus, so what I'm saying is between 68 and 72, I have 68% of the data. So if I surveyed 100 people, 100 kids or whatever, the weights, their weights, 68% of them lie between 68 kilos and 72 kilos, okay? So that's if you go plus or minus one. If you go plus or minus two, so say in our little example, I said this was 70. So if I go up to 74, because we said standard deviation, I said it was, so let's just pretend it was two. So if I go up to um, 74 and up to, and down to uh, 66, so we're saying within there, 95% of the data lies between that and that, that number. So if you had 100 people, 95 of them, people would have a weight between 66 kilos and 74. So and so this rule only applies if it's symmetric. So if we've got this perfect bell shape. And then if we look at three standard deviations, so in my example, if I said that was the mean was 70, and if I go, so remember, if I went up three standard deviations, I'd be at 76. 
and if I minused three standard deviations, I'd be at 64. So what I'm saying between 64 and 76 is 99.7%. So that's a lot. If I had 100 people at nearly, you were, if you round up, you would say nearly all of the data is falling in between there. So can you see we're never going to go above three standard deviations, three or four, because once we get to three, we, ne we don't quite have it all, but we nearly have it all. So there's that's where we would say that. So that's why we say, you know, plus or minus three standard deviations, we nearly have the whole data set. Okay. So now what else we're going to start looking at is we often start talking about these little pockets. So if we've got 68 here, so if you think if you've got 100% in total, okay, if you've got 68% of it sitting in there, you've got 32% um, left over. So really what we say, this little pocket 16 and that's little pocket 16, because it's symmetric, it's a perfect pattern. So what we can say is if I had, say, um, if I was in here, say, my, say I had a person um so weight was i'm making this up was 70 say 73 i would say they're in the top 16 percent was 73 kilos sorry they're in the top 16 percent yeah so this is how we can start describing some of the data so then if i had someone who was um i'm going to say so say for example, if someone was 65 kilos, they would be here. So I'd say they are in the bottom 2.5% of the data, okay? So have you talked to me when you did quartile? You will hear people talk about this and say when you're in the top 16%, even for your ATARs, uh, they do they they force it to become symmetric, and that's why you will only have a you know if you uh, get say you get a sixty eight percent on your ATAR, uh, you know it all depends. They'll have this bell shape. So when you can see, there's only going to be a small minute people in the top ATAR, which makes sense. That's what they do. All right, so let's have a look. It will make a little bit more sense if we do some questions. So let's work with me here. So they will either give you the mean or standard deviation or you've been given all the data and you've worked that out yourself. But let's have a look. So when they do these questions, they have to tell you that the data is symmetric. Otherwise, you can't use that rule. So you will see in all your exam questions or um, and from questions now, they will tell you that either the data is symmetric or they'll say it's normally, sometimes they call it normal distributed. So let's have a look. So the distribution of the examination scores for a very large statewide examination is approximately symmetric. So there you're going. So let's just write a little note here. So they will tell you that it it's symmetric. Tell you, oh, I should write data is symmetric, okay? <coughs> so sometimes they say approximately symmetric. Sometimes they say um, normally distributed. Can we just write that up there too? Write that normally distributed is another way um, of saying symmetric data, okay? So you might see that word, so if they say that. So they've told me that it is normally distributed and now I'm going to, they're going to tell me what the mean is and there they told me what the mean is and then they told me the standard deviation was 10. So with these questions, it's very, sometimes it's really easy if you just quickly draw the shape and you put all the numbers in there because it'll make it easier to answer. So we know the mean is 65. Now we're either going to go up one, two, or three standard deviations, or we're going to go down one, two, and three. So because they told me the standard deviation was 10, 
So I can pop the numbers up there. So if I added 10, that'd be 75. If I added two tens, it would be 85. And if I added three, 95. If I take it away, be 55, 45, and 35. Oops, sorry. And 35. So if I, come on. 35. So if we look at this first question now, it says, I'll change the pen so you can see. So approximately what percentage of the students score between 55 and 75? So if you look, 55 is here and 75 is here. So that is plus or minus one standard deviation. Now back up in our rule, what did we say? If we were plus or minus one standard deviation, how many percentage was in the middle there? Yeah, 68%. So we can say that 68% lie between um, 55 and 75. So then if we look at B, um, it says 45 and 85. So that's plus or minus two. So how many, what percentage is plus or minus two? in the middle of that, if you look back up, what was it? It was 68 and then the next one was 95. So they're always going to be these numbers. 95 lie between 45 and 85 and I'm tipping the last one's going to be 3. Let's double check. It's 3. So we've got plus or minus 3 standard deviations. So in between there, we have 99.7%. Okay, so it'll, the numbers like, so whatever they're measuring, so this was um, examination scores, lie between 35 and 95. Okay.